Now we first had a look at the flyback converter where we have one primary switch. The application range for flyback converter is approximately up to around 100, 200, maybe 300 watts. Afterwards, it gets critical to get the heat out of that one power semiconductor on the primary side with the remaining losses in that device. So what we can do, we can switch to a push-pull converter and a half bridge converter there, where we spread out the losses across two primary devices. And these converters are typically getting applied in power ranges of two, three, four, five hundred 500 watt, maybe up to six, 700 watt. If we even want to extend the power range further, we can spread out the remaining losses across even more devices. And that is done by the transition from a half bridge to a full bridge converter. We actually end up having already four devices on the primary side and the capacitors from the half bridge now get replaced by active power devices, by active switches, typically MOSFETs, could also be IGBTs. And otherwise the operation is pretty much the same as we had in the half bridge converter. Once more, this diagram is showing the secondary side as a current doubler, but you could also apply a voltage doubler, a full bridge rectifier, or a half bridge rectifier here, and that would have an influence on the resulting DC transfer function. Similarly, as we had with interleaved operation, we have two transistors on at the same time. That's the high side device in the left half bridge and the low side device in the right half bridge. As both of those are ideally a short circuit, the full input voltage is applied across the primary winding from the dotted end to the non-dotted end coming from the DC input voltage source over here. That also means that Faraday's law is transforming the input voltage from the dotted end to the non-dotted end over to the secondary side. And this time it's the full input voltage scaled by the transformer turns ratio N2 divided by N1. And that also holds for the other secondary winding. Otherwise the operation is the exact same as we had in the half bridge. Current is flowing into the dotted end on the primary side and can escape from the dotted end through the upper diode into the inductor here, while the lower diode is blocked by the voltage provided by the other secondary winding over here. During the first off time of both switches, we have the exact same freewheeling operation in a full bridge converter as we know already from the half bridge converter. During the on time of the second switch, that is when half of the period is over, we start to turn on the second switch with its duty cycle DT. We short circuit the start of the primary winding to the ground through the low side switch of the left half bridge and the, and the non-dotted end of the primary winding, the end of the primary winding, is short circuit to the positive supply voltage through the high side switch of the right half bridge here. Faraday's law is transforming the voltages over to the secondary side, following the dot convention of the windings, and Ampere's law forces the current from the primary side to get transferred over into the secondary side. The lower diode conducts magnetizes the inductor and provides load and capacitor current. The upper diode is blocked due to the voltage applied from the upper secondary winding. Furthermore, after the on time of that switch, it is followed by the off time of all four switches and we have the same freewheeling operation on the secondary side or towards the output. The duty cycle of the first two switches is the exact same as the duty cycle for the other two switches. And overall, this duty cycle 
is limited to be less than 50% as there is no overlap allowed in the drive voltage of the high side and the low side because if both the high side and the low side would be turned on at the same time, we would simply short the DC voltage source on the input. Compared to the half bridge converter, we end up with the factor of two here, and that is simply coming from the transfer ratio from Faraday's low over to the secondary side, where we're not converting just half of the input voltage, but this time we are transforming the full input voltage.